animals the best example is the human so today we will learn about the structure of human respiratory organ not only this we will also learn the physiology of respiration as human is the higher most class or you can say the top most uh, organism into the hierarchy of the all animal when we talk in the uh, phylogenetic way so we all know that human is at the top most or the most complex organism so most complex organism means it will be having the most complex respiratory system too so for that reason for better understanding i have divided this topic in two parts today we will be just talking about the anatomy that means we all are going to learn the structure of lungs what are structure of respiratory system means what are the part of the respiratory tract then uh, what is the how the lungs of human looks like and thereafter in next lecture we will be talking about the physiology of respiration in man in that we will be learning the mechanism of respiration how the respiration occurs how the gaseous changes occur so today we will be talking just about the structure of the uh, structure of the respiratory system so let us begin now when we talk about the respiratory system of human so our respiratory tract we know that the respiratory surfaces we know the characteristic it must have one opening that opening must be in contact with the oxygen medium that is air now when we talk about the human so the medium is definitely the air right so it it is having the nasal or the nair opening but the human is the only animal or you can say it is also uh, higher hierarchy higher most animal which possesses the nose so it has the proper opening you will find uh, the nose in monkeys also and some other higher animals also so they have the their nares are modified into the proper nose and then there after now see when we talk about the aim so last uh, lecture when we were talking about the pigeon so there we have seen that the respiratory system ends up into the highly vascularized capillary form that is the alveoli uh, in that case alveoli was not present but the bronchus was subdivided and it was uh, completely uh, giving the fine fine capillaries for the better gaseous exchange so yes in the case of the human also such type of the uh, branching of the bronchus is found and it is much more organized in the case of the human so when we talk about the respiratory system of human so human respiratory tract is divided in two portion upper and the lower when we talk about the upper system so that upper system is located outside the thoracic cavity and respiratory organ or lower respiratory system will situated inside the thoracic cavity this is our thoracic cavity so whatever uh, part is present above it is called as the upper means this is our thoracic cavity so this is upper thoracic cavity this is lower thoracic cavity okay so when we talk about the upper thoracic cavity so you will find that upper thoracic cavity will have the nose now nose uh, will have the nares also that is situated inside then there after you will find that we have the pharynx now you can see this pharynx is a proper funnel like structure and it also have the associated structures like larynx epiglottis glottis 
Glottis we all have learned. Now today we will be talking about the epiglottis also. So let us discuss in detail about the respiratory tract of human. I have just uh, taken the diagram of the lower respiratory system here. Upper respiratory system is here only. So we'll stay on this slide only. So when we talk about the upper respiratory system or upper respiratory tract, so externally you will find that we have a nose. Now let us discuss about nose. This nose not only makes the human beautiful or the handsome in the case of boys, but also it has a very, very, very important role in the respiration like uh, now see if a single day you get the nasal block how do you feel you feel very suffocated very irritating and we not only it disturb our respiratory system it disturb the entire system you will not be in good mood when you have the nasal blockage you will not find uh, anything good in uh, why because the main source of oxygen is blocked. So it has a very important role in the life of a human. So when we see the nose externally, so you will find that there is a pair of opening. And this opening is called as the nostrils. What it is called as nostrils. Now from this nostril, from this hole, from this opening, we take the air inside. So what is the role of the nostril? Nostril helps in drawing the air inside. Then this nostril leads into the nasal cavity. When we observe the nasal cavity, nasal cavity is vertically divided into two chambers. Now this is our nose only, so we can check it. You can find that uh, there is a proper two chambers and these chambers are being made by the nasal septum. So the nose have the outer opening. This outer opening is called as the nostril. And this nostril is lead into the nasal cavity. And the nasal cavity is divided in two chambers. And these uh, chambers or this partition is made by the nasal septum. Now this nasal septum. Uh, chamber it has three regions the anterior most anterior i always tell you the anterior is the top most or the upper part so the anterior most region is the vestibular region and it is lined by hair now this hair aids into the you can say uh, prevention of any foreign particle like dust, uh, bacteria or anything. Then the second region is called as the respiratory region. This region helps into the air conditioning. Now air conditioner, why air conditioner is required? Because whatever air we are taking. So we need to make, now see, uh, all, we do not take the dissolved oxygen like fish, right? So uh, what gaseous oxygen we are taking, we need to moisten it. So for the reason of the moistening, the air, uh, this air conditioning chamber is helping. So this chamber, that's why uh, is called as the respiratory region and it has the role into the air conditioning. Now, this chamber helps to warm and moisten the air entering in. And the third region is the olfactory region. Olfactory region means uh, it has connection with the smell, okay, which receives the olfactory stimuli. The nasal cavity uh, is very important and it has three regions. One needs to remember that Anterior region, vestibular region, have hair. It is helping in protection. Then second region, respiratory region, it is helping into the air conditioning. Then next region is uh, the third region, olfactory region. That means it is helping us 
for the stimulation because we know that nose is not only the opening of the respiratory system but it also plays a role in the sensation so this is also our sense organ so we smell with our nose so all this uh, specialized structure makes the nose characteristic like incoming air is warm whatever air we are breathing in is warm moistened filtered now this moistened air by the mucus present in the nose and now how they are mucus means moistening the air because of the mucus now we all know that our nose have the mucus inside it so this mucus is moistening the air and now now moistening we understood okay mucus gland is there this mucus is moistening the air then how it is giving the warmth to the air the air is warmed by blood flowing through the capillaries in the nose we know our blood has some sort of heat so this is giving the warmth to the uh, blood then olfactory stimuli are received here whatever smell is there we can smell by our nose then large hollow resonating chamber it also modify the speech in sound now see when you have the nasal blockage immediately you will find that there is a change in your tone right your voice will change so why because this uh, hollow resonating chamber is also modifying our speech sound so that's why when we have the nasal blockage it affects our speech also then let us discuss the next part that is the funnel shape hope you understood i'm talking about the pharynx so this pharynx start from the internal nares and extend up to the last cartilage of the larynx see now uh, starting from nares and ends into the larynx so the that's why it is having the two portion the anterior portion <clears throat> which is connected with the nares it is called as the nasopharynx and the lower portion that means the posterior portion will called as the larynopharynx now when we talk about the wall of pharynx so wall of pharynx is lined from inside by the mucus membrane now what is the role of pharynx this pharynx function as a passage of air and food so common passage is there so there must be uh, some control now see the lower portion of the pharynx which is connected with the larynx region or you can say the larynx region is also called as the hypopharynx this hypopharynx connects the esophagus with the larynx and the resp uh, now we all know esophagus and respiratory tract and digestive esophagus is a common this opening so this is connected overall connected uh with the digestive tract as well as the respiratory tract so lower portion has the two regions you can see in the diagram i have not aided the digestive system but it has connection now how it is prevented we know there is one cap like structure and the name of that particular structure is glottis so yes human possess the glottis this gl glottis is a slit like aperture and when we talk about the glottis region so anterior to glottis there are certain modification that is called as the epiglottis point to be remember is epiglottis is a cartilaginous structure now till now uh, we learned about the glottis in the case of the amphibians we learned the glottis structure in the case of the pigeon also so we have learned that just is a cap but in the case of the human it is a proper 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 uh, covering which prevents the human lungs because we can not support a single drop of water 
in our uh, respiratory tract so uh, even if it is drawn so it is removed by the pulpary action whatever hairline is present inside it so we cough immediately we cough if anything goes inside our uh, respiratory tract so sometimes when we talk so much while eating so we get such type of coughing attacks so now see uh, let us discuss about the glottis Glottis is a slit-like aperture and it acts as a flap. So whenever we are eating or we are drinking the water, this uh, prevents the respiratory tract. Now, uh, interior to the glottis is a raised epiglottis. Epiglottis is a cartilaginous structure. It can be folded back to close of the glottis and it prevents food from entering into the passage of lungs. let us discuss the next part larynx now see our sound box is larynx but in the case of birds we have learned about a very very specialized sound box that was the resonating chamber that is the syrinx okay so in the human we don't have the syrinx because that is a very very Peculiar feature of the aves only, syrinx is present into the aves only. We have the larynx. Now, when we see the larynx, you will find uh, now see in the case of birds, we found syrinx was present somewhere here, right? But our larynx is here. And in the case of bird, we have seen they don't have the larynx, but they have the rudimentary larynx because their larynx is not having any vocal cord. So it is a small, thin walled and tubular structure. It contains the vocal cord. Hence, it is also called as a voice box. It is supported by the cartilage. Point to be remembered that the names of cartilage which are present in the case of larynx is important. You have to buy heart the names. So the larynx is supported by three cartilage. One is cricoid, then thyroid, and two arytenoids. Three names you have to remember, but there are four cartilage. One is the cricoid, one is thyroid, and two arytenoid cartilage. So all this cartilage prevents the wall of larynx from collapsing. Now you will find in the case of the uh, larynx is little bit increase in the size. Even we can see when they get their puberty or when they get maturity so that time they get the pitch of masculine voice so for producing that they their larynx is become a little bit increase in size and that's why we find that when the males get their puberty their voices suddenly change you might be uh, uh, Finding some boys, those who are studying from their childhood with you, their voice suddenly changes. So why their sudden changes occurs? Because of the change uh, into the means it is all because of the sex hormones which are produced in their body. But we will not go to the physiology as we are learning the anatomy. That means the structure. So here what happens, uh, their larynx is increased in the size and you can see it prominently. The male, their larynx portion little bit, it comes out and their voice become little harder and larger than of the females. So this is because of the enlarged vocal cord. Understood? Then this is about the upper respiratory tract. Now let us discuss with the <coughs> lower respiratory system now i have not typed it properly it is lower okay it is a mistake so lower respiratory system consists of the means it starts from the trachea to the alveoli let us discuss one by one all now when we talk about the trachea Trachea is also called as the windpipe and it is 11 centimeter long. 
now it is a dead storage space means prakriya in case of the storage it do not store any 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 part of the air whatever air is been stored it is stored into the lung and the size is very important to remember in the case of human prakriya is almost about 11 cm when we talk about the protection you can see that it is having some wing like structure yes the trachea is guarded by approximate 16 to 20 c shaped cartilaginous ring and <coughs> so this uh, cartilaginous ring prevents the trachea from collapsing when we talk about the wall of trachea so i'm sorry the wall of trachea is lined by the ciliated epithelium with the goblet cells now this helps uh, in propelling anything which is unwanted for the respiratory system out okay and because of that only we get the coughing now this cilia helps to expel dust food particle anything which is trying to enter inside the respiratory tract it could be the bacteria it could be the food particle it can be the uh, water anything so all these things which you were trying to enter in to uh, avoid its entry inside the lungs it is trapped into the mucus and whatever goblet cells are present into the trachea they have the cilia so their ciliary action expels the thing uh, whatever things are been trapped into the mucus outside then you can see that the trachea is having the partition right that is the bronchus now when we talk about the bronchus so this bronchus is divided as we have already learned in the case of the pigeon that the bronchus always branches so this bronchi is nothing but the division of the trachea and uh, you will find that it is giving two partition one is the right side and another is on the left side so this partition is called as the primary bronchus whatever is present outside that is called as the primary bronchus means this uh, y arm okay this y arm is called as the primary bronchus right side and left side uh, bronchus will enter its side of lungs respectively now when we talk about the bronchus so both the bronchus are not same you will find that this right bronchus is little bit wider shorter and more vertically placed as compared to the uh, left bronchus yes see i repeat the property of the right bronchus it is wider you can see it then it is more vertically placed and it is shorter than the left bronchus now when we talk about the primary bronchus so primary bronchus after entering inside the lungs you will observe it in the diagram only that it divides into the secondary bronchus now this secondary bronchus will continue branching and it will form still small small bronchus this small bronchus is called as the tertiary bronchus and this tertiary bronchus will further divide into uh, formation of the bronchioles and this bronchiole will even branch further to form the terminal bronchioles so once again we will take Uh, this uh, revise it trachea trachea divides into the primary bronchus this primary bronchus will give secondary bronchus secondary bronchus will give tertiary bronchus this tertiary bronchus will give the bronchioles this bronchioles will give the terminal bronchioles okay and so this is about uh, about the bronchus and this trachea is commonly referred to as the bronchial tree because it is just branching branching so that's why i'm sorry 
think this is called as the bronchial tree now let us discuss about the respiratory surface that is the lungs now you can see it is present into the pair and it is lying in the thoracic cavity i told you that the lower respiratory system it is present within the thoracic cavity so it is present inside the thoracic cavity and it this thoracic cavity is protected or prevented by the ribs so they are soft elastic spongy separated from each other by the heart and the other structures so many other structures are there so uh, when we talk about the lungs so you will find that the right lung is slightly thicker and <clears throat> broader than the left lung you can observe it because here uh, there is a position of the heart when we talk about the right lung so it is present on the right side and uh, you will find that it is little when we talk about the size so size is little bit shorter than the left why because it has to accommodate the liver they have to adjust themselves so for the accommodation of the liver which is present inferior to inferior means above it so it is present inferior to it so for that particular reason you will find that the right side uh, diaphragm is little bit higher and you will find covering let us discuss about the covering so there are two type of covering this two layered sac is called as the pleura now this pleura protects the lung now the pleura outer uh, part is called as the parietal pleura now this parietal pleura is attached to the wall of thoracic cavity and inside which uh, cavity means double membrane is there pleura sac pleura sac has two layer the outer part is called as the parietal pleura parietal pleura is attaching lungs to the thoracic cavity and the inner uh, membrane which is in close to the lungs that is called as the visceral pleura now between these two layers to avoid friction and smooth movement there is a lubrication and this uh, is lubricated by the Uh, some mucus like um, uh, substance so this is helping so this fluid between two layer reduces the friction and allow the smooth movement of the lungs during the breathing now each lung is divided into the lobes you can see here the lobes are there so you will find that the this left lung is having two lobes and the right lung has the three lobes so left lung uh, the upper part is known as the superior lobe and the lower part is known as the inferior lobe now this is the, this lung is divided by the fissure that is called as the oblique fissure now when you will observe the right side lung you will find that it is divided into the three lobes superior lobe middle middle lobe and the inferior lobe you will find that the superior lobe and middle lobe it is separated by the horizontal feature and the inferior lobe and uh, middle lobe here there is one oblique feature see uh, once again i will tell you about the lobes when we talk about the left lung left lung is divided in two lobes one is the superior another is the inferior between these two lobes there is one feature that is called as a oblique features when we talk about the right lung it has three lobes superior lobe middle lobe inferior lobe this superior and middle lobe is divided by the horizontal feature and when we talk about the middle lobe and inferior lobe partition so this partitioning is done by the oblique lobe now when we talk about the left lung left lung you can see there is some depression like structure here this is so this is called as the cardiac notch 
what it is called as cardiac notch this cardiac notch has a means a depression like structure to accommodate the heart when we talk about the inside so we know that inside the lung it includes the bronchial tree fine branches of the bronchioles each bronchioles ends into the pulmonary alveoles now see here uh, this trachea is ended into the uh, terminal bronchiole so each terminal bronchiole will enter into the lung structure that is known as the alveolar i hope this alveolus term you remember that is the air capillary which i told you is absent in the case of birds right so these alveolus are present in the case of the human lung and the eight terminal bronchioles or you can say the last most portion of this bronchial tree is end into the pulmonary alveolus and this pulmonary alveoli are the tiny tiny sacs these are also called as the air sacs these are characterized by the single layer membrane see point to be remembered the alveolus are the single layer membrane it with the blood capillaries at the other end now blood capillaries are most important because this is the respiratory surface where the gaseous exchange will occur each alveolus is lined by the flat squamous epithelium cells and it's highly glandular and vascular now this is the main respiratory surface the main respiratory surface or the unit of respiration in the case of human is the alveolus so uh, that's why now all the property of the respiratory surface you will find here it is thin that's why it is single layer then <coughs> highly vascular glandular is the in the alveoli blood and air are separated by only two layers the epithelium of alveoli and endothelium of the capillaries so uh, you are understanding that one endothelium that means the blood capillary is coming and alveoli is having its own uh, single layer so two layers are there so blood and the air it is having the separation and here the uh, whatever gaseous exchange is happening it will occur here so the barrier between the Two has the thickness of only zero point five micron. Can you imagine so fine, so fine? Only zero point five micron. Now we all know uh, that micron is the very smallest. That means ten to minus six meter. We, now this uh, thickness means the fineness allows the efficient exchange of the gases. and the number of alveoli in the lungs is estimated to be approximately 750 million so approximate so many alveolus are there so all these alveoli see if it is single it will be called as alveolus and if it is plural it will be called as alveoli so 750 alveoli in one lung so all this helps in the efficient exchange of the gases the surface area exposed to the air within the lung is approximate 800 square feet more than 50 times of the skin surface of the body so this is all about the structure of the lungs next uh, <coughs> next lecture we all will discuss about the physiology So at this note for today we will stop